Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners, and it's later in the week, which means it is now time for our rankings videos. And if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners, or maybe you forgot from last season, the rankings videos are to be used in conjunction with the start and sit videos that drop earlier in the week. Why is that? Well, the start and sit videos are in-depth looks into every single matchup and every player on the roster to really give you detailed information. And then the rankings videos, which now come out on Thursdays, that is to update you on anything that has happened since those videos came out. And if you have questions about start and sit related options, well, if we've got two guys listed as starts in the start sit videos, the rankings are now gonna help you determine who we would go with over the other. So make sure that you're using both of those videos and checking out the content to maximize your lineup every single week. And if you wanna help out the channel and be supportive, well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a new way to do that this year. The Holden Chubb membership, there's a join button right down below next to the subscribe button for $4.99 a month. You're gonna get some cool extra features, including a brand new Sunday morning only supporter live stream. That's right, if you become a member here, members only live streams on Sunday morning, you're still gonna have the Saturday night live stream. That's not going anywhere. But before kickoff, I will be live here on YouTube for a members only video to help everybody set their lineups and talk about anything that may be happening before kickoff gets here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time though. Let's hop into the rankings. We're gonna start with wide receivers first. And with wide receivers, we're gonna start at number one and make our way down to 30. The top of the list is, I mean, it's, it's no surprise, right? Devontae Adams going up against New Orleans. I'm expecting a big game out of him. Tyreek Hill against Cleveland has all the big play upside in the world. Calvin Ridley against Philadelphia at number three. I love Calvin Ridley, especially this week in a matchup that I really think is gonna go over on the points and is gonna have a lot of throwing. Again, Calvin Ridley has wide receiver one upside every single week. The hope is, fingers crossed, he's scoring touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins going up against Tennessee at number four. Stefan Diggs at number five against Pittsburgh. We never set Stefan Diggs. AJ Brown at number six is interesting because he was a did he was a did not participate, a DNP in practice Wednesday afternoon. Apparently the knee's acting up a little bit. I don't think it's severe enough at this point that we need to not start him against Arizona on the uh, on Sunday, coming in at number six for me, but I definitely think it is something that we are going to have to monitor. Mike Evans at number seven. I'm a little bit higher on him this week than most others. Why is that? Well, I just think that it is gonna be a huge game. And we found out that Chris Godwin's got a little bit of a thigh issue. We'll talk about that here in a second. But Mike Evans at number seven, definitely see a big game incoming, especially if Godwin is limited in any way, shape, or form. Justin Jefferson coming in at number eight. Hopefully that shoulder's feeling good, fully healthy. Could have a huge game against Cincinnati. DK Metcalf at number nine. Touchdown upside, big play upside going up against Indianapolis. My only worry about DK Metcalf is if Seattle gets up really high early that they just start running the football. Terry McLaurin could end up having a rough game but I'm still putting him in number 10 because I think we are going to air it out and Terry McLaurin is going to see plenty of targets come his way. The target share should be there and that alone puts him in as a wide receiver one. Keenan Allen going up against Washington. This is an interesting one for me. There is some worry for me that Justin Herbert may not have a ton of time to throw. This is obviously a very good Washington defense. And because of that, Keenan Allen working out of the slot or on the outside is the guy that runs those really fast, quick routes where Herbert can get rid of the ball the quickest. And for me, that is a great opportunity for a lot of volume this week, especially if LA is having to play catch up at any point in time or having to throw the ball because the run game is sputtering. Number 12, Robert Woods going up against Chicago. Another tough matchup, but give me some Bobby Trees as the wide receiver one in that offense. Week number one against Matthew Stafford. Julio Jones going up against Arizona. Now, for some reason, A.J. Brown can't go. Julio Jones is going to get one heck of a bump for me, so that is something to keep an eye on. But if A.J. Brown might even be limited, that also helps Julio Jones. That's why I've got him up at 13 right now. Adam Thielen, I'm actually about six spots higher than him than the ECR right now. That's expert 
consensus rankings, but don't remember, don't, don't forget. There's no such thing as an expert in fantasy football, but I'm about six spots higher than the ECR. One reason why going up against Cincinnati, they're going to treat Justin Jefferson as the locked in stone wide receiver one. Now that gives Adam Thielen a little bit more room in the slot. He's not going to get some of those coverages that he used to get. And with that shoulder shoulder, hopefully make sure it's, it's a hundred percent. But if it's not for Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen can see himself a big game. Chris Godwin's at 15 for now, but like I said, we're going to have to keep an eye on it, and we're going to have to see what happens as the week um, as the week progresses here. Again, on Thursday night, at this point of this recording, I haven't heard anything other than he's kind of questionable at this point, but nothing has ever, nothing's come out, nothing's been said at this point that says he's not going to play. C.D. Lamb at number 16. Love some C.D. Lamb this week. Remember, he was one of my prize pick props for the week. I absolutely love him. We're getting the ball out early for Dak Prescott. C.D. Lamb is going to be the guy for that. D.J. Moore going up against the New York Jets. This could end up being a really fun game. A little Sam Darnold redemption, anybody? I think D.J. Moore is going to be the benefactor here of that. Allen Robinson at 18. Allen Robinson's a lot lower than I would like to go. But you're not sitting him, ladies and gentlemen. All right? You are not sitting him. He is still a start for me, even if against if it's against Jalen Ramsey. The one thing that I like about Allen Robinson is we can move him all over the field, and Jalen Ramsey doesn't go into the slot. So if we can get Allen Robinson in the slot a little bit more often, he's going to get away from Jalen Ramsey, and that's going to give him a better opportunity. He is lower on the, on the list because of the potential matchup with Jalen Ramsey. How many snaps against each other do they see? I don't know, but I'm not sitting him. Even if the floor is lower, he's in your lineup. Tyler Lockett at 19 going up against Indianapolis. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's not the boomer bust Tyler Lockett that we're used to. Hopefully he gains a little bit more consistency this year. Cooper Cup against Chicago. My hope is, is working out of the slot. He's a nice red zone target, but the problem is the Rams need to get into the red zone first. Brandon Ayuk, I expect some big plays going up against Detroit, but he's not higher than 21 for me right now because if they get up early... I don't expect them to throw all over the place. They're going to use Trey Sermon, and they're going to use Raheem Moster, and we're going to be running the football. Amari Cooper at 22. Again, on Thursday Night Football, this is a tough defense. To me, he just doesn't fit the same role that C.D. Lamb would. I do expect them to throw quite a bit, but Cooper's only going to get into that 15 to 12 range if he scores, and I just don't know how many times Dallas is going to score on that Tampa Bay defense this week. Deontay Johnson at number 23 going uh, going up against Buffalo. I do expect them to throw the ball quite a bit. Deontay Johnson I have is the wide receiver one this week. Him and Juju are both starts for me. Juju's name's coming up at number 29. Chase Claypool is out just because I don't know if Ben is going to have enough time to throw against that Buffalo defense and if the matchups on the outside are going to be uh, tougher for him. But the one thing that Deontay Johnson and Juju can do well is they can release and they can run crisp routes on the short end of the field, get the ball out quickly, and make moves down the field. So I don't see big plays for Deontay Johnson this week, but I see enough volume, especially if this turns into a shootout, he's going to get those targets. LaVisca Chenault Jr. going up against Houston. The only reason I don't have LaVisca higher is because you've got Marvin Jones and DJ Chark there, and I've got all three of them as starts this week. I definitely think that this is a game that going up against a poor Houston defense that they are going to have to throw. But again, who's it going to be going to? And if they get up, up, are they going to want to, you know, let's make sure we keep T-Law healthy. We don't want him getting knocked around. Let's just run the football with James Robinson. So that's another reason why he doesn't have the ceiling that some of these other guys do this week. T. Higgins, kind of the same thing. We've got great wide receivers there. I just don't see the ceiling going up against Minnesota this week, although a touchdown is never out of the question with him. OBJ at number 26. Yeah, I've got OBJ over Jarvis Landry right now. I like them both, but OBJ is ready to make a comeback. He wants to he wants to quiet people. And you know Baker Mayfield, he loves to do the same thing. So don't think for a second, going up against Kansas City in a game that they're going to have to throw the football an awful lot, that 
Baker isn't going to be looking OBJ's way quite often. I just expect some bigger plays out of OBJ than I do Jarvis Landry, and that's why he's falling in here. Debo Samuel at number 27. Again, the same thing with Brandon Ayuk. The matchup's great going up against Detroit, but how high is that ceiling going to be? At number at, uh, 28, Tyler Boyd going up against Minnesota. Love him out of the slot. I think he's being vastly underrated so far this season, and I think he's going to do a lot of good things out of the slot. At 29, Juju Smith Schuster already talked about him with Deontay Johnson a little bit, and then Antonio Brown coming in at number 30 for me. But if for some reason Chris Godwin can't go or we find out he's going to be extremely limited, Limited, Antonio Brown is going to take a pretty high jump for me. Now, just like we did last year, a few notable players that didn't make it into my top 30 that I want to touch on real quick. So out of those guys, we've got Devonta Smith and Jalen Rager. I've got both of these guys as starts this week, again, in a matchup where we could see a lot of throwing. I think both of these guys are going to get plenty of targets this week. Corey Davis and Elijah Moore, both for the New York Jets. Again, another matchup where I think they're going to have to throw quite a bit. What's the ceiling going to be for Zach Wilson this week? Zach Wilson has had great chemistry with Corey Davis. I'm smiling because I saw you all in the comments of the Start Sit video. He has great chemistry with Corey Davis, but Jamison Crowder, who's headed to the COVID list, not for sure if he's going to be able to play or not this week, haven't been ruled out. But if he's not, then Elijah Moore could take that first step towards locking down one of the prime positions in that offense. Jamar Chase is not making it into the top 30 because he's not a start for me this week. Nothing against Chase. He was my wide receiver one in the draft. He is a great talent, but he didn't play at all in 2020. He took all that time off. He had some issues with drops in the preseason. I just don't think they're going to force him the ball. They're going to bring him along, let him knock some of that rust off. And even though, I mean, he could come out and have a really, really good game. And yeah, I could end up eating it at the Jamar Chase isn't a start this week, but that's fine. I'm playing it safe with him for right now. Kenny Galladay, I went back and forth on this one a little bit. Why? Because with Kenny Galladay, Evan Ingram is out. But the hamstring is a concern for me. He missed a lot of time in preseason and training camp with the hamstring. And I don't know if he's 100% yet. And the last thing I want to see him do is go out there and re-injure himself. And I'm sure the Giants are thinking the same thing. They just spent a bunch of money on him. So let him go out. Let him get some run in. He might have a few catches and a few targets. I just don't think any type of big game is coming. And I don't want to risk it in that matchup going up against Denver for the New York Giants. And then Marvin Jones and DJ Chark. I talked about it with LaVisca Chenault. I would like these guys to be higher, but I need to see these two play out because these guys are going to be the deep threats. But who is going to be getting the targets consistently? I got to see that week one. I'm starting them both, but I just don't know at this point which one is going to be the guy to kind of take over that deep route. Now, let's go ahead and move over to my top 20 tight ends. We're going to stick with the top 20 tight ends at this point. And Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Darren Waller. Those three are going to be at the top of the list every single week. Travis Kelsey's always going to be there. Kittle, the reason I'm giving him a slight bump over Baltimore is because it's Detroit, right? Not over Baltimore. Over Darren Waller versus Baltimore is because it's Detroit. Darren Waller, he's going to get plenty of targets. No need to worry about him. Mark Andrews is hopping into number four for me. Again, Lamar Jackson has no Rashad Bateman. And Marquise Brown, he's listed as questionable right now. I don't think it's going to end up being an issue whatsoever. But Mark... Mark Andrews just got a huge extension. He's going to come out ready to ball against Las Vegas on Monday night. I firmly expect him to find the end zone against the defense. That probably isn't going to be great against stopping tight ends this year. Kyle Pitts making his debut again in a matchup going up against Philadelphia. Well, I think there's going to be a ton of points scored. I want to see what they do with him. How often does he line up a tight end in the slot outside? That's going to be interesting to see. TJ Hawkinson at number six, I would go higher with him, but last season San Francisco was the best teams in terms of limiting fantasy points to opposing tight ends. He's going to see plenty of volume, but I don't think the ceiling is going to be there to overtake Pitts or Andrews this week. Dallas Goddard going up against Atlanta. I've got Zach Ertz as a sit this week. I think it's going to be Goddard, but it will be interesting to see how that plays out. I expect Jalen Hurts to be throwing the ball quite often. Janu Smith at number eight for me this week. Hunter Henry, who's been out with a shoulder injury for a majority of the preseason and training camp. Janu Smith comes into this matchup against Miami. Mac Jones in his first start. I can't imagine that Janu Smith is going to be coming off the field often, and I would ex fully expect Mac Jones to be looking his way 
Again, another prize picks bet for me this week for him to take the over on the yardage. Tyler Higby, number nine, going up against Chicago. It is a tough Chicago defense. Matthew Stafford, very familiar with it, is going to be looking to probably move the ball a little bit quickly, and Tyler Higby is going to be able to help with that. I definitely think he makes it inside the top 10, especially if, especially if he finds the end zone. Noah Fant at number 10 going up against the New York Giants. Again, Noah Fant, not a whole lot of targets. We've got Cortland Sutton back. We've got, uh, obviously, Jerry Judy, who's going to be a very great connection for Teddy Bridgewater there. You've got K.J. Hamler, who can run. I mean, and we've got, obviously, the running backs, Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. So what are we going to see from Noah Fant? It's a t I think New York is going to have a tough defense this year. I really do. And I think they're going to be able to keep up with the tight ends. I still got him in the top 10. Just be a little bit wary of that ceiling this week. Logan Thomas at number 11. This is not the Checkdown King Alex Smith anymore. This is a different ball game. I don't expect the same type of volume we saw last year. Big Bob Tunyon going up against New Orleans. Keeping the fingers crossed he finds the end zone because I think a lot of the targets and yardage he saw last year is going to be transferred to Randall Cobb. Mike Gusecki at number 13, New England. New England's defense, a lot better this year than what it was last year, but Mike Gusecki is going to be that guy for Tua. He's going to be that guy that is hopefully getting open on those routes that are going to lead to higher percentage completions, and Tua's going to be looking his way often. Gerald Everett, all the way up to number 14 for me. Love Gerald Everett this week. Love Gerald Everett. Every single week, I hope Russ is looking his way often. Jordan Aikens at number fifteen, going up against Jacksonville. I've said it. Uh, I've said it quite a bit. He was in the. He was in the draft guide. Jordan Aikens, one of the best tight ends in terms of working out of the slot. Their slot receiver, who was supposed to be Kiki QT, has been released, and now you've got Anthony Miller in town, who it's dealing with injuries once again. And they signed Danny Amendola to bring him in. Well, he just got there this week. Expect to see Jordan Aikens in the slot quite a bit this week going up against Jacksonville. Number 16, Jack Mother and Doyle. It feels so good to say it again. Got him as a start this week going up against Seattle. Carson Wentz. I mean, the foot injury, everything he's been dealing with, getting rid of the ball quickly, really not being able to explain, expand the play and get out of the pocket. Jack Doyle is going to be a great, great asset for him. Kyle Rudolph all the way up to number 17 for me after the news that Evan Ingram is going to end up missing this week. And again, apologies in the start sit video. ESPN's got to get their stuff together because when I recorded, he was listed as participating in practice and being fine. And then all of a sudden, other websites were listing him as being out. I didn't realize it because of the injury report I was using. Anyway, we got Evan Ingram as a sit. We got Kyle Rudolph in because all their other tight ends are experiencing injury problems as well. Tyler Conklin at number 18 for me. I would like to go higher with Conklin. I think he's going to find the end zone this week. But the problem is, is how much do we see Chris Herndon on the field? Number 19, Anthony Ferksker. I'm not as, as, as high on him as other people. We've got Julio Jones and we got A.J. Brown. However, if A.J. Brown were to be limited or miss for any reason, then Ferksker is going to shoot up this board. So it is something to keep an eye on. And at number 20, Mr. Austin Hooper going up against Kansas City for Cleveland. I do think he gets a few targets. Again, this is going to be a high passing, high volume game for Cleveland, but I'm not expecting any type of a huge game. But there you have it, Headliner Nation. My top 30 wide receivers with some notable guys and my top 20 tight ends for week one of the regular season. Don't forget before you get out of here, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new and leave a comment down below and let us know, did this video help you make any decisions? Are there any guys that you were having issues starting or sitting? And did this video help you make that choice? Make sure you stick around for all the great content the rest of the week as well. Weather reports, our tailgate chef of the week was a new segment we got this year. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And of course, the live show on Saturday night. Peace out. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Enjoy Thursday night football. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.